May 2023, the outpatient department of the RENA unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital was shut down due to a 4 million Ghana city debt owed by the facility. This led to the death of about 19 RENA patients, with others being forced to seek health care treatment at private health facilities at a much higher cost. Providing an update on the situation in Parliament on Thursday, the Minister of Health, Kwekwajiman Menu, announced that the financial Ministry has approved the disbursement of the 4 million Ghana city to clear the outstanding debt. So, Speaker, over the past five years, a company in Ghana we call the First Sky Group of Companies has graciously committed to paying 1 million Ghana cities every quarter to enable patients who cannot afford life saving maintenance hemodialysis to have two sessions of dialysis a week for free. Currently, there are 230 patients on the free dialysis program. This is the ceiling on total number of beneficiaries specified by First Sky Group of Companies. This constitutes over 80% of the patients receiving treatment at the RENA unit and accounts for over 80% of the RENA unit's revenue. Mr. Speaker, for the past two years, Payment schedule, the payment schedule initially agreed on with First Sky Group of Companies has been fraught with delays. Due to these delays, the RDU continues to accrue exchange rate losses, which has made it difficult for, R, for the RDU to service the monthly payment to the partner. The MOH has since made a request to the Ministry of Finance to settle the total indebtedness of the 4 million Ghana cities. And the good news now is that the Minister for Finance has just approved the disbursement of this four million to support our patients in Kolebu. Way forward. To forestall the recurrence of this unfortunate situation, the Ministry in collaboration with Kolebu and the Minister of Finance is considering one of the following options. The possible inclusion of dialysis on the National Health Insurance Benefit Package, the grant of subsidies based on proposal received from Kolebu, and a possible review of the tariffs to ensure sustainability of the services. Mr. Speaker, government has invested with the support of Parliament by approving facilities for us in the construction of a 100-bed ultramodern urology and nephrology center of excellence at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, which will be commissioned by the end of the first quarter next year, 2024. This is aimed at facilitating the provision of kidney transplantation services, among others. Mr. Speaker, this will further reduce the dialysis burden on the nation and the need for Ghanaians to travel abroad for these services. We want to see government intervention. If First Sky Group can mobilize funds to treat Sakharin free, a company like FMC can buy or come to an agreement to provide about 60 dialysis machines. How many, how many dialysis machines has the government provided? that you don't find it here in the minister's statement. How many dialysis machines have they sent to Kolebu, have they sent to Konfanoche, have they sent to uh, Cape Coast, Hope, and to my regional hospital and what? How many? We need to see the government efforts zero. in the minister's Is zero. And that's what I mean by the fact that there is no hope in this statement. I will call upon the private sector to, as it were, indulge in the construction, of course, the uh, uh, opening of such centers to aid government in handling um, renal diseases in the country. The speaker, if this will be possible, however, then it means that government should find a way to either remove or reduce taxes on equipment and materials that are required for these um, centers to operate. That will be government's contribution to, you know, ensure that we have these centers scattering around instead of me traveling all the way from Tema to Kolibu to go and lie on a dialysis machine for one, two hours and going back home three times every week. If we have such centers around where I live, that I need to only travel maybe 10, 15 minutes to go and do this uh, 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 um, exercise and come back home. This week, it speaks volumes and it saves life. 
The president of the Renal Patients Association spoke to City News after the briefing by the Minister of Health, Kwekwajiman Menu. He called on government to consider scrapping the taxes on consumables for dialysis treatment in the country to help lessen the cost. The government have to look at the tax component. In the, in the, in the minister's thing, I didn't see the tax thing coming in. They have to look at the tax component because already the consumables are very expensive. He goes, he buys it, he brings it down. He come and pay huge tax. A private person cannot do that. Definitely after paying that, he will put it on the, um, the thing for the patients to come and pay. So uh, the government should look at that. And then, my uh, brother, if you don't think, uh, Kolibu will shut down again. The reason, we have only 15 machines. Out of the 15 machines, 250 are OPD, okay? We have ward cases. I think they are normally about 100. They are there. And each one of us go on for four hours. Four hours. So look at it. And then moreover now, when you take the, the prices of the dialysis, I can say now Kulibu is charging 380. They are going to charge the least. Now the private sectors are charging at least the least you are going to 600. So now if Kulibu is doing 380, you, I mean, put yourself, you are paying six something, something Kulibu is doing. All of us will move into Kulibu. There is going to be a lot of pressure on Kulibu. And the machine cannot hold us 15 machines, the whole Accra. So they should look at the tax. When the tax are ticked off, I think it will bring the prices down for the private sectors because in Accra, they have a lot of dialysis centers around. So when the taxes are ticked off, I think it will bring the price down. So they should look at the 